All right, well, hello and very warm welcome to Business Today TV. I am Chetan Bhutani. Well, today I am joined by the managing director of IIFCL. Well, it's very rare that uh, a parliamentary committee literally appreciates a PSU. And today, of course, it's a bright day for IIFCL. Thank you, Mr. Jay Shankar, for joining us. Of course, it's a bright day because a parliamentary committee uh, on the public undertakings has, has you know, showered praises on how you manage NPAs. Give us a highlight of what the report says and what how the road sector has been. So has the has the lending been started under your guidance, sir? Yeah, thank you, Chetan. Uh, yeah, it's indeed an honor for uh, IAFCL uh, for uh, you know having received this uh, uh, laudable uh, uh, you know uh, words from uh, the uh, parliamentary panel. Uh, on uh, this panel was on uh, uh, the road sector, a. Uh, Committee for Public Undertakings panel for public uh, sector undertakings. And uh, uh, the issue was uh, on the road sector, how the road sectors have, has, has performed in India and how IIFCL has fared. And uh, it was a kind of uh, uh, a, a, an examination of all the issues involved in the process, in the journey that IIFCL went through uh, in the course of uh, the development of uh, road sector in India. So I think uh, 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 this was uh, sometime last year and the report has come out uh, recently. And uh, we we were very pleased and we were very happy that uh, we got the appreciation from the uh, parliamentary panel on uh, the various uh, aspects that uh, uh, have been examined. And particularly the measures that we have put in place for uh, uh, containing the NPS and uh, uh, also uh, for uh, uh, suggesting some reforms for the future strengthening of the road sector. So I think uh, uh, this is uh, only reassuring for us. Uh, we, we keep uh, we, we continue to move in the direction that we uh, uh, started about three years ago. And uh, we have uh, done a number of things. Uh, when you specifically asked what are the reasons, the reasons could uh, mean uh, so many uh, areas that we actually uh, uh, revamped the company. It's a turnaround in the last three years. Uh, from the uh, uh, NPA point of view, uh, the NPAs were soaring somewhere around uh, uh, twenty percent about three years ago, it would have it. It was even more, but the thirtieth, thirty first March, twenty twenty, uh, showed uh, NPF about uh, nineteen point seven percent. We were able to contain the net NPA today to one point seven percent. So I think it it has come a long way, uh, and uh, it it's all because of the uh, uh, focused recoveries. We had put in place a policy for uh, managing the net performing assets, uh, the managing the overall uh, NPS, uh, and uh, also uh, ensuring that uh, our recoveries do well. And uh, our recoveries have performed very well, and we have, uh, you know, uh, 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 recovered uh, almost. Uh, 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 fifty percent, over fifty percent of what uh, the write-offs have been. So I think that is uh, that's been a very uh, uh, heartening uh, uh, note for us. And uh, at the same time, uh, we had to look at. Uh, at that time, the company was posting losses. We had a you know operational loss uh, during two two thousand nineteen twenty. Uh, and uh, we had to come out of it. We had to. Uh, we we were not having any pipeline because infrastructure uh, projects, infrastructure financing means uh, you know it's actually uh, financing a project will take time. First you sanction, and then by the time the disbursements uh, are there, it might be about six months, and then over a period of two years you disburse. So you, unless you have a sound, robust pipeline, mm -hmm. no infrastructure company can perform well. So we needed to build a pipeline. At the same time, since the pipeline was not there, and if the company is uh, outstanding, where to, uh, you know, uh, keep going, we needed to have some quick disbursements as well. Correct. So I, because otherwise, the base effect was also trying to catch up because outstanding was the loan book was, uh, you know, uh, shrinking, 
and on the other side the npa was growing it was that was the scenario when i took over and i think uh, on the one hand uh, we we while we put in place all the measures to uh, contain the npas and you know arrest the npas and do the recoveries the other side was to ensure that we uh, grow our books and for this we needed a very good uh, uh, resources and treasury because at that time our uh, uh, cost of funds was around uh, 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 the, the base the, the base uh, lending rate of iifc all ifcl was around 9.7% as mm-hmm. compared to uh, 7.8 to 8% mclrs of the banks and state bank of india so we were very very uh, highly priced and therefore uh, uh, we were not preferred lenders to the good projects correct. so we needed to correct that so we needed to focus on resources and treasury uh, retire the high cost uh, borrowings we had to kind of do a lot of uh, rejig we put in place a resources strategy we had brought in a integrated uh, risk management framework an uh, asset liability committee more dynamic one and then uh, we uh, and more uh, Uh, frequent uh, uh, meetings for uh, ensuring the that the cost of kind of funds uh, uh, are uh, you know contained and gradually in the next two two and a half years we could bring down the base rate to uh, almost nine point two as and today it's nine point uh, sorry seven point two as com- uh, and today it is seven point six five as compared to the MCLRs of uh, other banks which are hovering around eight point four to eight point five so we are i would say in a way uh, you know our uh, uh, cost position is much better and mr prashankar uh, I'll, i'll i'll intervene you here uh, you mentioned about um, uh, you know uh, the focus on balancing the fact that lending is equally important and of course growing books uh, is equally important and cleaning of the books is also very important uh, could you give us a sense on how uh, the recovery uh, uh, the recovery of the npas uh, was was done because um it might be a lesson for other psus or other companies who are actually lacking especially the banks who actually face a lot of problems in facing and had to ultimately write off the npas so uh, how was it done give us a brief sense uh, probably a lesson for the other psus as well uh, well uh, uh, for for iifcl we were ha- we had you know uh, given overriding priority to public private partnership projects correct and uh, most of our npas were uh, in the road sector mm. uh, some of the npas were in the uh, power sector mm. and uh, other sectors also were uh, there but uh, not uh, you know to that uh, uh, in not in the that great a proportion as compared to the power and uh, road uh, and road sector npas suffered from uh, uh, mainly uh, the uh, termination uh, uh, related issues so and since it was all uh, the uh, uh, public private partnership domain with concession authorities the termination payments were all stuck up they were stuck up for more than 3 to 4 years hmm. so we needed to declog that uh, you know channel and uh, that was one major uh, initiative which uh, i had to personally undertake uh, by uh, coordinating with uh, the uh, Uh, ministry of roads and transports hmm. and uh, the dfs and uh, many other ministries uh, and also the state government departments where such uh, uh, issues were there we had to go through a very very uh, long and arduous uh, process in this uh, uh, in this uh, exercise and we had the full cooperation of the secretary morth and hmm. we had the full cooperation of the other uh, you know uh, functionaries of the government i think i would uh, give a lot of uh, credit to them that we we had uh, succeeded in this entire efforts but yes we had to put in place some mechanism for declogging and uh, we played that nodal role for doing that uh, right and how is the banks situation? benefited banks also the banking sector also benefited in that and a significant amount of termination payment was released and the, uh, we at the same time we also went through the other channels of uh, you know uh, uh, resolutions uh, mm-hmm. we were the first institution to actually uh, have substitutions done without haircut we did it first with uh, one of the projects and then uh, we fo- the, we followed it with another uh, six projects so seven projects iifcl has done uh, uh, on a harmonious substitution 
uh, without uh, any haircuts. So I think that was another uh, very uh, uh, important uh, uh, area which we worked on. And apart from that, the normal uh, recoveries, the uh, one-time settlements and all that went on. But yes, we put in place mechanisms to ensure all that, you know, ensure the valuation, ensure that, you know, an independent panel of uh, a, a com comprising of a high court judge uh, of, uh, you know, of the former uh, executive uh, director level officials, all they were all, you know, managing the, uh, the uh, validity and credentials of uh, such uh, uh, settlements. So I, I, that was independent. So I think we... Uh, we fired from uh, multiple cylinders and uh, all of them, them you know, uh, uh, provided the outcome that uh, we desired. So it was all, a, you know, it was all a sincere effort, I would say. And uh, it all shows the potential of the institution. I think, you know, the entire performance, the turnaround that we have been able to see is mm. it actually signifies how much potential this institution has and how much it can, you know, uh, contribute to our nation building. Right. Uh, Mr. Jashankar, also, how is the sector doing? Road sector, we are seeing a uh, record number of uh, construction numbers every day, record number of awards also happening. But how is the lending scenario with respect to banks and other uh, private lending institutions? Do you also think that uh, the, the, the project getting stuck up and, of course, leading to delays in projects are still happening? Or, of course, the situation is much better on the ground? Uh, road sector, if you are, uh, uh, you know, referring to only the road sector, yes, uh, a number of uh, the road sector projects are, you know, uh, uh, have been uh, uh, identified and they have been constructed and they have now been commissioned. So we have a very, very good road framework now as compared to what it was a couple of decades ago. Uh, and the pace of construction of roads also has in increased with the advent of new technologies, spacers and all that. So we, we can now look at uh, faster constructions with lesser labor and, uh, you know, um, uh, to kind of uh, beat the inflation to a certain extent. All these things are also now possible. What uh, is uh, the uh, uh, concessions and the concession contracts and what are the uh, nuances of the uh, terms and kind of provisions of the concession contracts. Those also, thanks to the Kelkar panel in 2014-15, uh, a lot of reforms have uh, come about. And uh, now the land acquisition is now compulsory for, you know, giving the appointed date. And now the the dispute resolution also, to a certain extent, we have uh, now put in place. We have arbitration panels, which are now uh, much, much faster than what they were doing before. But it is not enough, definitely. I'm not saying that these are enough. We need more reforms. And I think uh, uh, it is all about uh, how, how much reforms that we are able to uh, put in place that will dictate the uh, uh, confidence of... Uh, private investors and sovereign investors to into the field. So I think in order to, uh, you know, uh, boost private investments, we need to have a very sound and robust uh, uh, concession platform. And right. uh, it, the allocations of risk must be very, very uh, economous and uh, they must, uh, uh, they must be transparency in all the, uh, uh, activities involved so we, in, in order to in order in order that the investors take that much interest in investing in uh, uh, the road projects i think uh, that is happening uh, and the government is quite uh, uh, enthusiastic about putting in place the reforms and i i i i see this the the current year's budget as one of the landmark uh, milestones for uh, this process. A lot of reforms have been suggested. We have also uh, got uh, uh, the, a review uh, suggested by the uh, budget uh, for uh, you know, uh, reviewing the uh, process of uh, defining infrastructure under the harmonious list. I think that is itself a great uh, 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 you know, uh, step. So many things like that ha are uh, required and uh, uh, the government is going about in a very, very steady uh, manner for all that. So uh, I'll also take your view on uh, the recent listing of the NHI NWITS, uh, with, you know, the credit trading agencies also giving a good ratings to the NHI. Uh, do you think the NHI NWITS and the listing of subsequent listing of it would eventually attract uh, foreign investors, angel investors, and of course, domestic investors as well? 
See, today, uh, the completed assets is what uh, uh, is an attraction for the uh, uh, investors, uh, mainly uh, the sovereign investors, as well as, you know, for uh, uh, funds to flow in uh, with private equity funds coming in and also the, uh, uh, the domestic uh, investor environment. I, I think uh, it is all the uh, it's all the completed projects. I think as far as the brownfield environment is concerned, that has become much more active as far as investment uh, uh, is concerned. Uh, we need to carry this on to the green field uh, with reforms. So I think uh, uh, as far as the brownfield, uh, uh, is, uh, to be specific about uh, NHAI, I think NHAI is invits, uh, and invits itself is a very good uh, platform for uh, ensuring uh, that uh, the developers who complete the project can, uh, you know, uh, release, get their equity released by uh, transferring the project into the investor, in, into this uh, equity vehicle. Uh, I mean, invit vehicle. So I think, uh, you know, it's a very, very good uh, uh, channel for uh, uh, both investors as well as for uh, developers. And uh, it is only how they manage the assets. And all the invits today have very high quality assets. So, uh, you know, that itself is a very good hallmark for, uh, you know, um, uh, ensuring that uh, the invit uh, climate will only... Uh, uh, develop further. So, uh, with uh, 2.5 lakh crores today, uh, the size of uh, AUMs in the invit, I'm mm -hmm. sure uh, uh, in the coming years it will uh, quadruple. So, I, I'm, I, I think the way in which the uh, uh, asset monetization is uh, uh, being seen as a main source of uh, creating capacities for uh, various. Uh, uh public sector uh, you know concessioning authorities including the nhi uh, it must uh, it it must prove to be a very very good vehicle and i, I it has it has fantastic potential right mr jayshankar towards ifcl now uh, now we are in, towards the ending of the financial year and of course starting of the new financial year uh, where is the lending starting now and uh, standing as of today for this current year and of course for the next financial year uh, what is the outlook on lending for the highway sector in particular See, uh, uh, overall, uh, IIFCL used to be three to four years ago, on an average, sanctioning about five to six thousand crores a year, and uh, on an average, disburse about three to four thousand crores every year. Today, uh, I mean, consistently in the last three years, we have been over twenty thousand crores sanctions. Uh, with 2021 having seen about 21,000 crore sanction, 22 having seen 26,000 crore sanctions, and today we have already touched 29,000 crores. We okay. hope to end it uh, about uh, uh, above uh, 30,000 crores. Uh, similarly, we have a 22% uh, uh, growth in the disbursements. The outstandings have increased by about 10%. So it is a overall, uh, you know, we have seen uh, a very, very uh, overall uh, and a very good pipeline in the process. Uh, uh, cumulatively, the sanctions have crossed to uh, 2.4 lakh crores for IFCL. Of this, uh, you know, 35% uh, of the business was done only in the last two and a half years. And uh, the uh, uh, profitability that was attendant, the uh, NPA, again, you know, with uh, the growing outstanding on one side and uh, growing recoveries on the other side, we were able to contain it very, very low levels uh, as compared to the uh, earlier years. So uh, uh, overall, you know, the uh, company stands very firm and stable and is ready in the takeoff uh, uh, area. And uh, uh, at the same time, the, we have put in place a strategy. So it is not going to be a, a, a person-centric, uh, you know, approach. It is as we have we have been for the first time ever in IIFCL. We have put in place a very uh, concerted strategy for uh, the growth of this company, and uh, we are working in tandem. We are working in uh, accordance with the uh, uh, milestones that have been, uh, you know, uh, indicated in the strategy. At the same time, we have. Uh, you know, the Reserve Bank of India and the CAG also uh, with us giving their suggestions and inputs. So we are taking all those things very seriously and we are going towards, uh, you know, achieving our, uh, uh, you know, outcomes. And this year we hope to uh, more than double the business that we have been doing in the last two or two and a half years. So uh, we are in a very, very firm footing. We are in a very good uh, 
uh, stable uh, phase. The focus uh, in future will be resources and uh, long-term resources for infrastructure sector. We would like to augment uh, uh, long-term resources from multilaterals, from sovereign wealth funds, from uh, various other uh, uh, sources in the private uh, atmosphere. So I think uh, we will uh, give more emphasis for resources and uh, growth of uh, our uh, 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 funds uh, for infra uh, infrastructure, long-term funds for infrastructure projects, and which will which will you know be more uh, uh, you know uh, uh, which will provide that kind of strength for us to lend longer and lend. Uh, Correct. Also, Mr. Sir, uh, also, sir, uh, regarding roads, airports, ports, and renewable energy sectors, which IFCL is very active in lending to, uh, what are the what, how is the mix of lending you are seeing for the next financial year? Uh, we were very uh, focused only on roads and power earlier. Right. Uh, in the last two and a half three years, we have increased our uh, uh, the uh, lending avenues. Uh, we are now having. Uh, a significant portion, a significant proportion of our funds going to the airport sector, to the uh, port sector, to the uh, various other in, uh, urban infrastructure sectors, uh, metros, uh, and uh, you know the new areas like the data center and uh, you know um, we also like uh, renewable energy and uh, you know clean uh, green energy is one area where we are uh, focusing on and uh, in which and uh, bonds. These are some uh, new uh, areas which we are again focusing on. So we have a, 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 an array of around uh, 18 subsectors uh, to which we are focusing our uh, uh, investment and uh, lending. But so, if you could give me a priority number, uh, like if you, could, if you could just distribute the priority in which you are looking at disbursing loans to or supporting that particular areas. For example, if highways remain the top, then highway number one, then renewable energy than railways and airports how is the chronology here see chronology will the, in the chronology the focus the the the, the leading sectors will continue uh, okay. to uh, the roads and uh, power will continue to remain the read but in the power uh, you know there is again a distribution we have been in thermal we have been in gas we have been in renewable energy we have been in waste uh, we have been uh, in uh, so many other areas we, now we have uh, also lent to Nuclear Power Corporation. So the uh, thing is, uh, uh, we are now uh, getting more granular into the uh, subsectors. So that gives us much more uh, visibility in uh, the field level. Uh, at the same time, we are able to kind of uh, uh, look at uh, infrastructure uh, from various other angles because skill sets are needed for you know uh, uh, different areas because. Uh, road lending and power lending is again in power also the various other subsectors now oil and refineries and uh, oil exploration and oil uh, uh, pipelines gas pipelines these are some areas also we have been seeing uh, city gas that is another area which we have been seeing now uh, as clean energy is a is a in very very important focus area and that uh, is something which uh, uh, we have to look at uh, new areas also coming in like electric vehicles hydrogen and all that so uh, these will be probably these will form the priority obviously but at the same time uh, uh, the sectors which i mentioned in addition to that airports uh, uh, ports transmission these are all again those areas which will you know continue to play a very very important role in the entire process Right. Uh, sir, last question. Now, uh, when we last met, uh, you had particularly mentioned about a dedicated law on infrastructure and subsequent lending ROMs that are needed. Uh, are you still standing by with your words, sir? And uh, what do you think now that, you know, the budget has uh, done a lot for infrastructure sector and especially the lending part? Do you really think now is there a especially a need for a dedicated law? See, actually, uh, 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 the budget definitely has put uh, is has been a very very important uh, forerunner for all these uh, you know things which we are talking about but uh, it's only a law which can actually develop the confidence of investors uh, fully because uh, in infrastructure projects are generational in nature they go from government to government people come by we are talking of 15 years 20 years 30 years 50 years so we don't know uh, how the uh, environment will change. And as the environment change, 
the uh, provisions which have been uh, decided ab initio will not remain relevant in the early later years at the same time governments will change the perspectives will change the attitudes will change so that doesn't mean an investor who has invested his uh, money uh, right in the beginning ab initio would would uh, you know need to be uh, would need to face the uncertainties because of all these and not only the investor i think it's also the quality of uh, the uh, uh, projects the way in which it is maintained uh, and uh, service delivery is done to the people at large because the users of infrastructure sector also deserve better and at the same time uh, the concessioning authorities the regulators and the financiers they are again very very important constituents in the process so if the interests of all stakeholders have to be taken care of it is only a very very concerted law which can do that today we are seeing you know different uh, uh, laws being quoted in different uh, uh, in different contexts uh, and particularly when it comes to enforcements of the provisions we don't have a very very strong enforcement regime so this again uh, gives that kind of a, you know a, a weakness in the system so you, if we need to you know overcome the weaknesses and we uh, they, they, they see these weaknesses as opportunities giving rise to opportunities i think we need to have a, a very very concerted law a dedicated law for infrastructure where ministries can also uh, you know uh, converge and where we can have a, a very good uh, redressal mechanism a regulatory mechanism because i still feel infrastructure has not stepped out of its uh, teenage phase and uh, teenagers as they need more regulations so does infrastructure well absolutely sir and this was the same statement that you had made to me last time and i really hope uh, that the government listens to you well thank you so much for joining us uh, mr jay shankar wishing you all the best for the new year coming up and really hope the road sector blooms uh, under your able leadership for lending and please give a lot of money to investors so that they can of course build more roads for india thank you so much for joining us sir thank you thank you thank you very much sir if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe